In this video, we will learn to create syntax and semantic analyzer using Bison. In our last video, we wrote flex code and built a lexicon analyzer for our language Simple Simple C. In that video, we created ssc.tab.h ourselves and wrote our main function in the lexical analyzer. This was because we wanted to create the lexical analyzer as a standalone program and thoroughly test it. However, in reality, Bison will automatically create the header file sse.tab.h and our main program should reside in the Bison. Bison will take care of calling the lexical analyzer for the next token and placing it into the abstract syntax tree immediately upon receiving. Instead of generating all the token first and then passing them on, Bison allows us to work on continuous flows of token. This approach working with the stream of tokens is faster and more memory efficient. Let's jump in and start creating Bison code. I open my terminal. In my ssc directory, now there is only two files. Number one is ssc.l which is flex file and number two is testfiles.ssc. This file contains source code of our language for the testing purpose. In this video, we will be creating ssc.y that is a bison file where the bison code will reside. Just like flex file, bison file also has three different sections. First section is definition section. Second section is rule sections, which is obviously the most important section. And in the third section, we will write our C code and also we will have our main function. As explained previously, our main function will reside in the bison file. And the bison file will be calling flex for the next token and then inserting that token in the abstract syntax tree. So let's start by moving the main function from the flex file to the bison file. The main function will remain the same in general. However, instead of calling yylx, we will be calling yyparse. And yyparse will be calling yylx by itself. We must include the declaration of yyparse and yylx functions in the ssc.y. I'm also using yyin in my main program. It is a built in flex variable. I must include that variable as an extern file pointer in ssc.y otherwise my code will not compile. In the previous video, we generated the ssc.tab.h files containing all of our token IDs and a union to store token values. However, that file no longer exists. Now, we require token IDs that are shared between bison and flex. To achieve this, we should utilize the percentage token directive in our bison file followed by the name of the constant variable that will hold the token ID. Bison will then automatically generate the ssc.tab.h file with the corresponding variable names and assign token ID to these variables, ensuring that Flex and Bison use the same token IDs. 
Following that, I employ the percentage union directive to define the names and types of element contained within the union. This union serves as a container for token values, including identifier names and double literals, etc. The creation of union and tokens IDs through these directives facilitate communication between Bison and Flex, establishing a shared data framework. The variable names specified with percentage token directive represent the terminal symbols of our context-free grammar. It is important to identify the start symbol of our grammar using the percentage start directive. In our case, the start symbol is labeled root. Following this, we begin writing our context-free grammar and linking each grammar production with C or C++ code. This process is known as syntax directed translation. In Bison, when defining a production rule, we first indicate the non-terminal symbol on the left hand side followed by a colon. Then we list the different alternatives for that non-terminal separated by the pipe sign. Finally, each production must terminate with a semicolon indicating the end of the rule. In roots production, we have only three alternatives. Print S for printing strings, print D for printing doubles, and assignment. That is because our simple simple C language only include these three kinds of instructions. However, we need a way to handle situations where there are several instructions corresponding to each alternative in our source code file. To do this, I have added a new epsilon rule at the beginning, which is marked with a command. Then, for each alternative, I have added root again at the right hand side. This way we have created a write recursion and thus can handle a source file having multiple instructions of any of those three alternatives. For each alternative in my context free grammar rule, we can write corresponding C, C++ code. While I plan to write more comprehensive code later, for now, I have added a macro named debug Python with different parameters for each rule to facilitate testing. Now, let's write the productions corresponding to each alternative of root. Recall that the printf function starts with an opening parenthesis followed by a string literal, a closing parenthesis and ends with a semicolon. We use this same structure in our context-free grammar rule. Note that all the tokens whose ASCII values were sent from flex can be used as characters in single quotes. Therefore, in our rule, we use single quote for the parenthesis and semicolon. In the code corresponding to the rule, we again use debug bison function with a unique parameter. Next, I write the rule for print d function. 
it is similar to the printf function but takes either a double literal like 700 or a double identifier we write similar code but with a non terminal named term as the parameter in a subsequent rule the non terminal term is defined to match either a double literal or a double identifier we continue to use the debug bison macro for each rule ensuring each call has a unique parameter next i write the rule for assignment let's quickly recall what an assignment is an identifier followed by an equal sign then an expression on the right hand side and ending with a semicolon we follow this exact sequence in our context free grammar rule in the corresponding c code we call the debug bison macro as usual note that expression is a new non terminal that we will define next the expression non terminal can take several forms it can be a simple term an addition of two expressions a subtraction of two expressions a division a multiplication or an expression enclosed in parentheses i understand that the definition of expression is left recursive and is ambiguous but don't worry i will address these issues later on first let me review all the rules one by one to ensure that there are no mistakes in the root prediction i missed a pipe sign after the epsilon alternative additionally the printf and printd predictions are not correct either i need to include the talk printf and talk printd tokens at their beginning to make them work perfectly after making these corrections my rules are now error free yahoo now i can focus on making the grammar unambiguous while it is possible to introduce several additional predictions to achieve this task the resulting grammar would be much more complex instead bison provide us with percentage left and percentage right associativity directives which simplify this task in our case i use the percentage left directive to specify associativity and precedence for operators i declare percentage left plus minus to indicate that the addition and subtraction operators are left associative and have the lowest precedence next i declare percentage multiply and divide to indicate that multiplication and division are also left associative but have higher precedence than addition and subtraction finally i declare percentage left with closing and opening parenthesis which effectively give parenthesis the higher precedence these directives give the parser additional information ensuring that our seemingly ambiguous grammar operates unambiguously cool yes lastly i check my definitions section to ensure everything is in order first i include studio.h and stdlib.h because i am using the printf and exit functions respectively secondly i notice that 
file is not in all caps so i must change it to all caps file otherwise my code will not compile finally i need to write the yy error function which used to be in ssc dot tab dot h but now it is nowhere defined and this function is used by both bison and flex i have already declared it as an extern in flex so i define it here now everything is in order and we are done with the first iteration of our bison code let's test it and see it in action in order to compile everything first i should use bison command i write bison minus t ssc dot y minus t is important because minus t will produce ssc tab dot h so please use minus t otherwise header file will not be produced after producing the header file and compiling bison next i will compile flex i will write flex ssc dot l finally i have all the c and header files now i have to compile them using gcc or clang i prefer clang plus plus so i write clang plus plus static dot c and my code has compiled without any errors then i run a dot out with the test file and it has produced desired output let me quickly go through the output so that you can understand to accomplish this i open my test file dot ssc and remove all the tests except one a equals to 5 semicolon then i execute it using a dot out the output of python via our debug python macro yield the numbers 8 10 9 1 4 these numbers correspond to the reduce instructions used to create the parse tree it is important to note that the bison utilizes an lalr parser which is a bottom up parser employing rightmost derivation and is not bothered by the left recursion by analyzing the output of debug bison macro we can pinpoint the corresponding productions in ssc.y and write the derivation of a is equals to 5 semicolon furthermore we can also create parse tree of our input text since the parse tree is created in a bottom up manner the llvm instructions class function insert before become useful for generating intermediate code in reverse i look forward for exploring this topic further in upcoming videos thank you for your support i hope to see you around